What's going on, YouTube and Yas Squad? This is your boy, Yaquatiz. This is your review for Bell Collective. This is Season 2, Episodes 1 and 2. So what I'm actually going to do, obviously, <laughs> since I said Episodes 1 and 2, I'm going to combine them together, and I am going to, to the best of my abilities, bring up each individual lady, and then kind of like touch on like some of the there's only been a couple of major like collective scenes, but we'll get through all of that, right? Because we're not going to be here long. We not. I got some ish to say, and I'm going to talk about ish, and that's just going to be that. Also, uh, if you are not aware, the Whether You Like It or Not panel will be on my channel in my um, house, or should I say the Citadel, this week. Make sure you're there, 815 Central on Tuesday. Yeah. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's get into it. So I'm just going to go down the list of the Le Dios. So I'm going to start with the new uh, ladies. We first have Ikea. Let her tell it. She is Jacksonville, Mississippi royalty. And in episode two, which is when we get introduced to her, many of her accomplishments are that of her family, her husband who did... um. 10 years in the NFL, if I'm not mistaken. But many of that, many of those accomplishments are not hers. And what little accomplishments she did give us is her managing her husband's, let's be clear, and just say his social media. But a lot of it was that. So that is what we know of her. And I really don't think that I missed anything. So now we have So Gucci. And hey, look, she is a larger than life personality. I'm kind of feeling her and whatnot. Um, her husband, well, I believe her husband, well, I can't speak to it because I, I never watched the other show, but she does have a larger in life personality, good spirits and whatnot. She was a little bit shady on the first episode and yeah. All right. So we didn't got a new girls of the way. Now, when we start discussing more of the scenes, I will go ahead and uh, bring in those women. So let's go ahead and get to Latrice. So we have Latrice. Uh, she didn't got some upgrades to her, um, her, um, cha-chas on the chest. Um, so, hey, look, bo look, most of the time when we do these shows and we review them, we talk about how that first season check cleared, but because of the business that she was doing, it just is what it is. And it probably could have just been either, A, this is something that she always wanted to do, or she watched the season back and realized that, hmm, my girls are a little bit low. Let me go hand in hand. So it is what it is. Um, she's cooking breakfast for her husband, um, and then we get introduced to one of his children, uh, his youngest uh, daughter, and Latrice says that with his children, that it's kind of almost like a sisterly type of relationship, given her age, and she kind of hopes there was more of a, you know, stepmother type of thing, but here's the reality. The fact that you are in the same age range as his children, you just need to just be happy that they're not being disrespectful towards you. That's the most that I'm going to say, because I'm going to keep it all the way 1,000. God, like, if my mother ever remarried and she dated somebody in her mid to mid 30s, late 30s, oh, we going to have a problem because I'm going to show me looking like, what the hell do you want with my mama? So I will be very, but again, I am more of an adult than uh, Clint's uh, younger child. But I'm just saying, like, you have some kids where it's just like, oh, we around the same age. What you want my dang on parent? Uh-uh. So brings that up. And then we also see that, you know, he is still pushing the children um, aspect of their relationship. And she doesn't want a child right now. And here's what I'm going to say. In terms of just children, he does have enough. But I can understand him wanting a child in this union that he has. But here's the other thing that I'm going to say. Is Latrice, if you and him kind of, even though it's not on paper, obviously. But if y'all made a commitment that you would bear a child for him. And now you are changing up the terms of the agreement. Then he has every reason to be upset. But there's an other part of this is your body. And we do understand that, you know, women in general, there are many complications and some women have died, you know, trying to give birth to a child. 
and not to mention African American women, you know, when they are in the hospital, just in general, many African American women, like their pains are ignored, even by those that look just like them because of the whole trope of, you know, being African American, all this other stuff, or just being African or African descent and being able to deal with the pain and all this other stuff. So I can understand if that was the aspect, but if there was an agreement and you're changing up the agreement, then y'all need to have that discussion and you need to be very forthcoming rather than dancing around the bush. Just be honest. Like, Hey, this is where I'm at. Boop, watch the whoop, bam, bam, bam. And if you really want a child and we got the funds, then you can take one of my eggs. You can, and then we can take your sperm, put it, put it together. We get us a surrogate. She can bear the child. And I continue to do what I'm doing. And since you send my at home, you can take care of the kid. <laughs> like that whole thing. All right. So let's see who else do we have. So we have Tamra. Um, she's still with her dude from last season. And from what she has told us, because I can only go off what I'm being told. I'm not even going to insert how I feel. But she says that, you know, they are getting it in, but there is protection there. We also find out that when she went in to have her fibroids removed, I forget the exact number, but it was like a low number, like less than 10 is what they had said it was. But when they actually went in, it was upwards of like 30 something. So, you know, that happened. You know, she is considering, you know, having a child. But but the main thing is that she wants to be married first. So she at least wants to try to go a more quote unquote traditional route. So she wants to be married and then have the child rather than having the child and possibly see if we're going to get married. So because she wants to be married first, uh, she has been forcing him to use protection. And there's nothing wrong with that, even though this comes up later in the episode. But there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you know what you want. You're not trying to put yourself in a certain uh, predicament or situation. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. She even goes to a fertility doctor and is talking to him and it vexes him because she's like, yeah, you know, we want a child, this, that, and the third. And he's asking like, okay, so is the swimmers not swimming? Oh, we've been using protection. So in his mind, he's not grasping the totality of it, but she didn't really explain everything. So just meh, but we'll see what all comes of that. So that's all that we have on Miss uh, Tamra. Okay, let's go ahead and get to Letitia. So we're coming off the heels of last season. Glenn, you know, um, infidelity that she had already knew about, but they're potentially being a baby on the way. That particular news had, you know, caused her to want to separate from him. So they are currently separated. She is, She has moved in with her mother. Now, when I heard that, I had an immediate pause, like many people did, because it's like, because most people just like, oh, well, since he cheated, he did this, he need to get out. Look, I don't know how the inner workings of their relationship work, so I'm not going to speak on that. But what I will say is, because he is out of the house more than she is, I felt it would have been more acceptable for him to have moved out than she have moved out. And the fact that it seems like we're going to see him more this episode. So is he not doing the job that he was doing last season that kept him out of the house? These are questions that make you go, hmm. And in addition to that, let's, let's be clear. When it comes to these reality TV shows, I don't get upset with the housing situations. Because I do understand you have some reality TV show um, celebrities or whatnot that they will rent a place and shoot there because of fear of people knowing where they live. Like I E with real housewives of Atlanta, somebody knowing where Candy lived and they showed up on her property and everything. Like these are real things. So I'm never going to, you know, be like, Oh, well you were shooting the Airbnb. I don't, I don't care about all that because at the end of the day, you want to protect you and your family. So I get all of that, but wherever their house is, if he's truly out of the house, let's just say three weeks out of the month, then he should have just found another place. Nevertheless, she's with her mom, and the wound is very fresh. And what I will say is, even though uh, Letitia gave some scenes that were kind of questionable, this wasn't. Because the feelings were very, very raw. And, you know, her talking to her mom, and just kind of like, you know, just going through the steps and whatnot, and just how she's feeling, 
And the biggest thing is just like, regardless of whatever they're going through, like one thing that people have to understand, especially when you create these unions is you can do your dirt and whatnot, but ultimately the entity that suffers the most is a child. And their child is really suffering because you have this child, even though the dad was gone so many months or so many weeks out of the month, now this whole thing is destroyed and you can see on the child's face how distraught he is. And it's very, very sad. <clears throat> and it does suck that, you know, children have to pay for the sins of their parents. It really does suck. He wants to have this conversation with her and give her these, you know, Hollywood movie lines that well, you know, Jacksonville's only but so small and you will have to deal with it. And it's like, yeah, she's going to have to address you, but here's the reality, bro, you ain't running nothing around him. And if she don't want to, if she wants to wait five years to discuss this matter, she has every right to do so outside of this being a reality TV show. But you don't get to sit here and, you know, raw dog all these other women and whatnot, potentially bring home something to your wife. Put your wife's health in jeopardy because you out here raw dogging women and then sit here and try to dictate to her when she needs to have a conversation with. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Calm down. See? <clears throat> okay. Because it's, it's shit like this that really do, like, it, it, it blows the fuck out of me and it pisses me off on some real shit. Like, just the audacity of how, and it ain't just niggas, like, but just how motherfuckers talk, like, anyway, I, I'm just move on because I'm going to get real fucking. There's a scene later on with um Letitia and one of her friends. We find out from the friend that. She has been um, having an affair with Tamara's boyfriend, which that scene was very, very manufactured, especially with how it was chopped up. And with a lot of these scenes, like the topics may not necessarily be manufactured, but how these scenes come together were, it, it, didn't, it didn't flow. It wasn't really organic, but I will be hard pressed to believe that Letitia did not know that her friend was having relations with Damon, especially with how close they are supposedly and the fact that her friend, you know, questions the validity of her relationship with Tamara. And my thing is, again, like once you saw the first, like the first season, even before we got to the reunion and you saw Damon with Tamara, that should have been it. But we going to, but you want me to believe that you didn't wait until now when the cameras. Were, okay. Anyway. Okay. All right. <sighs> Moving on. All right, let's go ahead and let's get to Marie. Now, I'm going to say this. <laughs> there are going to be moments where Marie will get grace from me and not mercy, but she will get some grace from me. And then there are going to be moments where I'm just going to pop off. So... She decided that she wants to wear blonde because blondes have more fun. Okay. <clears throat> what I, if, if that's what you want to say, perfectly fine. Stereotypes, all this other stuff. Meh. Um, she lets us know that she is building upon her enterprise, which is great. Again, we are always here for, you know, African-Americans, you know, expanding and being better, especially when it comes to the African-American woman, especially given uh, women's rights and how women were denied so much. And then with everything that's going on in the world right now, look, you look, in the words of Is Rock's fist pump of righteousness to the black woman, black girl magic, ain't gonna get enough. But then she shares with us that her son, one of his, um, one of the mother of his children, because I'm not going to degrade her by calling her baby mom, but one of the mother of his children was in a vehicle with their child, um, and that car was shot up. We don't know the ins and outs of it. We don't know if it was a drive by or whatever, or we don't we don't know if it was what well, was drive by. I would assume, but we don't know if it was like gang related. But it was shot up, and despite the fact that, that young lady lost her life, um, I think we all can agree that you know the Lord or whatever spiritual entity that you believe in, or if you just believe that it was by faith that you know, the wings of an angel protected that young baby. That young baby was not harmed. And <clears throat> in hearing that, I was just like, that is deep. Because, and Marie has a lot going on. 
So there are going to be moments where she gets a sl- not a full pass, not n- n- a slight pass, maybe like 5%. But that right there is definitely something that's just like, dang. And now it's to the point where, yeah, like this child she's going to have to take care of because, I, the, you know, the other grandmother um, could have taken care of, but you know, she's going, she's going to go ahead and take care of that child, which is very, um, upstanding and whatnot. But I wouldn't think anything less because if we recall last season, you had Marie literally taking care of not only her son, not only his children, but at least for one of his, um, children's mothers, you know, helping to take care of one of them, if not all of them. So this isn't out of the norm. And one thing that really makes me wonder is like, I guess when we learn about her and what she has going on with her mother, if her issues with her mother ties into her wanting to, you know, just go out of her way to give. And based off the math, all I'm going to say is, is I know the legal consent in uh, the crooked letter, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, 16. And I believe her son was in his early 20s when uh, he conceived with uh, this particular young lady. But I have a problem with that. And for anybody that says, oh, well, that's of legal age, let me be very clear. Just because something is legal doesn't mean that it's right or ethical. Because, and again, I don't care if this video gets monetized because I don't really give a damn. But if we go back to Germany and with what was going on with the Jews over there in Germany slash Europe, Poland, all those other different places with the Nazis and whatnot, yeah, it was legal to sit here and give up these Jews and those that are of the LGBTQIA community and those who were African American because it wasn't just Jews. It was a group of them, but the majority were Jews. But if you fell into one of those three groups, it was very, very, hey, you can give them up. And if you didn't, then you would be arrested and possibly killed or thrown in the concentration camp with them. Was that legal? Yes. Was it morally ethical and all the other stuff? No. Amongst other things that has happened in America. And I'm going to just leave that where it says. So just because something is legal does not mean that it is ethical. But whatever. I'm going to leave that where it is. Anyway. um, Marie is trying to figure out how when the child gets older, is she going to explain to the child that, you know, your mother's never coming home. Well, here's the reality. The fact that you have not only shared this story on this particular platform, this baby is on this platform. It will behoove you at the earliest point of this child being able to understand that you tell this child or your son tell his child about this because um, the world going to tell because this is the monster that is reality television. Okay, just want to throw that out there. Ah, uh, let's see what else do we have? Oh, there was this one scene where she was talking to her son and her encouraging him, you know, just like stay in school, this and a third, and you know him saying that he's gonna need her help or whatnot. Which I'm gonna keep it all the way a bug brush. She is literally giving all of what she has to you. And what I'm going to say is this, I'm not one of those people where it's just like, oh, I had to suffer as an African-American, so you need to go through the tricks and everything. I don't believe that. I really don't. And if, you know, a parent or a family has the means and they can keep their child from having to make all of the mistakes. Now, again, kids going to make mistakes and whatnot. You can't shield them from everything because your job is not to keep them from running into a brick wall, but it's to reduce the impact of them running into that brick wall. Okay. But given all of that, it's like you're giving and giving because she's telling him, don't worry, this, that, and the third. And I understand she wants him to get his education. But he also needs a bit of responsibility because just like you help father this child. So in addition to me running all these different businesses, in addition to me funding you, in addition to me taking care of my other children, in addition to me sitting here giving money to your other children's mothers now i physically have to also take care of another child that is below the age of my youngest see okay i'm just saying again marie is better than me and this is why i'm gonna give marie just a little bit of grace now them wigs though them straw hat wigs them dust broom wigs i'm gonna let i'm gonna let her slide 
Now, on the panel, we probably not going to do it. I probably going to have pictures and everything. Cause we, especially, is is don't let Terrence be there. Because I'm going to just go the hell off the camera and just let Terrence and even and if Reggie. I'm going to just let Terrence and Reggie, if, because I, I, we don't know, if both of them, I'm going to just let them go. I'm going to just let them have it. But anyway, um, we also get a scene from this particular episode of Marie meeting with her mother. And it was a very real scene. <clears throat> It, it really tugs on the heartstrings. And, you know, she was trying to get all these different answers from her mother because she's taking care of her mother and whatnot. She's appreciative that her mother is, you know, in essence, kind of making up for lost time. But her mother does, you know, dip out and whatnot and could possibly, you know, be going back to, you know, bad behaviors with her being an addict. And she's asking her just like, well, why do you do this? And her mom told her, I'm an addict. And I'm addicted to drugs. Like, it just, and it's one of those where regardless of how you feel, she's telling you in this moment, like, this is what it is. And as much as you want to help your mother, and it is such a beautiful thing, the best thing you can do for your mother is, if she hasn't been in inpatient therapy, you need to send her there. Because what's going to happen is, if you don't, and you try to do this yourself, even though you have clinics and everything else, she even said that she did her opio clinic and whatnot, to better understand what her mother was going through, have your mother go through that. Because it's going to tear you up from the inside out trying to sit here and do this and you don't have the tools to do it. That will be in your best interest. <clears throat> All right. So did I talk about everybody? In the, yeah, I spoke. Okay, so let's go ahead and get with some of these scenes and whatnot. Hopefully I don't forget. So, you have Latrice. She decided that she wanted to do a little high tea type of situation. I thought it was going to be, and this is episode one, I thought it was going to be like an infused type of thing, where it's like an infused uh, alcoholic beverage, but it was just alcohol, which is cool. Now, what she could have done is she could have did a Long Island iced tea shot. I'm, I'm just saying, see, see, see I'm, I'm, y'all know I love me a Long Island. I, I'm a Long Island kind of sort. That's, that's my that's my ish. But they do that um, with them being there. You have <clears throat> Letitia that's saying to Latrice, oh, is this all that's going to be there? Because it was all the women minus um, Ikea and Marie. And she was like, I want to keep it smaller. Because you're like, Cause I know why Marie isn't here. And it's one of those where if you know what is understood, need, needs no understanding. So if you know why she's not here, why are you bringing it up? Why are you trying to create a scene right now? And, you know, they're going through and they're talking to whatnot. You know, they're talking about, you know, if something doesn't serve, you let it go. Some things are, you know, for a season, for a reason, all this other stuff. Things we've heard before. Um, Tamara is talking about her man. You have uh, Letitia kind of inquiring, asking, like, is he really a man? Is he cheating? This, that, and third. Like, and I, I'm not going to specific just roundabout stuff that she was saying. And Tamara kind of like paid it does because her whole thing is, I understand what Letitia's going through, so I'm not going to take offense to what she's saying because maybe just maybe she's projecting. But sometimes when stuff like this happens, people might be trying to drop a hint that hint, hint, wink, wink, something, something, something might be going on in your backyard. Um, and then of course in this scene you had So Gucci making a comment about Letitia's, you know, hair, the wig, all this other stuff. Man, nothing too crazy. Again, in these first two episodes, we really didn't get a whole, whole lot from So Gucci, and that's not me being shit. I'm just saying, like, we got an introduction to her in the first episode. In the second episode, she had a few, you know, little moments and whatnot, but I'm pretty sure we're probably going to get more from her, if not in episode three, episode four, right? Um, so let's see what happened in episode... Okay, so at the end of episode one, <clears throat> um, Letitia and Glenn have a conversation, and, you know, she wants to question him about, you know, everything that was going on. Obviously, this was a very, very manufactured scene, especially given the fact that these two were wearing, um, I won't say identical, but they were somewhat color matching. So that lets you know, it's like, okay. And this is, and again, like we understand they have time sheets and everything. It's one thing if it's reality television. It's another thing if it's a docuseries. This isn't a docuseries. So they had a time sheet, this and third, who they was matching. Her whole thing is she wants to know, is the baby his? He says no, because if the baby was mine, I'll be on child support. Bro, that don't mean nothing. Him saying, oh, well, I've been trying to get a paternity test and ain't nothing came from it. Bro, if you really want that paternity test, you would have got that paternity test. Like, come on now. But if Letitia's want to accept this, that's fine. But I do respect the fact that she stood her ground. I'm just like, mm-mm, I'm not giving you what you want. And I appreciate that. 
that was episode one going into two. In episode two, she meets with um, Marie, <clears throat> and they were talking, and Marie had even asked her just like, I believe it was Marie, if I'm not mistaken, but I have you outgrown this relationship? And reluctantly, Letitia says yes, and it's like, okay, well, now in knowing this, hopefully you could really move on and move past and like really get a better understanding of what it is that is going on in your life. And she even invites uh, Marie to a brunch that she's having. Now look, at a minimum, she had two, I believe she had, and this is uh, Letitia had three brunches last season. They, they all really didn't turn out all that well. I believe it was two, possibly three. Now she wanted to do another one. And in this instance, She's bringing in um, Ikea. Now, in her talking, in, in her meaning, Letitia, in her talking with Marie, we get Tamara to join. Tamara anchored in Ikea. Was there anybody else that was there? No, I believe it was just them. And this whole entire time, you had Ikea where I don't, I want to say maybe it was just nerves, but it was very... Let me one of you. Oh, you did this. Oh, and oh, I did this. Oh, my family did this. Da, 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 da. And most of it wasn't even her. It's my family, my husband, my this, my that. Oh, we're royalty. We're really this and da, 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 da. just really trying to stake her claim. And we do find out that her family um, has um, real estate on Fair Street. So everything that Letitia was trying to do last season, here is your way in. She even said after the show wrapped. That there are many different people trying to call and, you know, trying to help out and whatnot. So you do have your way in. And they even have a building that is actually on Fair Street. So here is your way in. But it was just the whole how she came off that was very, very off-putting. You had Tamara bringing up how, you know, she was a part of the cute girl clicking and all this other stuff. Where when people, and here's the thing, when people say certain things, unfortunately, you sometimes have to cling on to what it is that's being said. And then you have Marie that had made a comment in her confessional where she was just like, I was told that those with those light eyes, you have to watch them. Now, I know a lot of people going to be like, oh my gosh, that is colorist. And that is a very colorist statement. Not even going to lie. But let's not forget, <clears throat> confessionals are shot after scenes. Typically weeks slash months after the fact, which lets me believe that chances are Marie saw something after that scene, but before she shot this confessional, <clears throat> to say this. But given how Marie acted in episode two, it was just like, ah, don't sound right. But again, totally understand it. But I'm also one of those where I'm a I'm a firm believer of let people talk. Let them talk. <clears throat> and from there, you can gather everything you need to say, especially for, and I'm, look, I'm a person that likes to talk. I am. Cause I, I, I just like to, you know, just, you know, chat it up to the good, this, that, and the third. But I know when to kind of like shut it off or whatnot. <clears throat> and I'm also aware if I'm, ooh, I might be a little braggadocious. Let me bring it back just a little bit. That isn't what we were getting from Ikea. She was being very, very braggadocious, went up in all this other stuff. Oh, well, you're opening up this type of clinic. Oh, well, you know, my family opened this up over here. But again, many of the accolades is what people attached to her have done and not necessarily what she has done. Things to look into. <clears throat> so some of the women were kind of like rubbed the wrong way at this particular luncheon, but we'll get to that momentarily. Uh Letitia, no, not Letitia, Latrice um has her husband come to her shop. It was a put together scene because she said she had some stuff going wrong and all he did was come in and you know screwed a loose nut and that was it for a water leak and whatnot. Again, do better. But she was saying to him how Letitia's having a brunch. Should she go? Especially you know that Marie's going to be there. And I can appreciate her not necessarily getting his permission because that's not what that was, but just getting his perspective. Like, should I go knowing there's issues? And you're just like, well, I mean, yeah. But he even said, like, look, women get together and whatnot, nine times out of ten, it's going to be some ish. Just be ready for the ish. But yeah, go. It is what it is. And at the same exact time, you're shooting the show. And I don't know how OWN does it, but again, we know at Bravo, if you are not in an episode, you don't get paid, so it could be the same thing here. And not even with they being paid, because, you know, many of them have respective businesses, you want to take every opportunity to, you know, present your brand in the best light that you possibly can, right? Cool. Uh, 
Let me see if I'm forgetting anything. So we get to the actual um, brunch. <clears throat> Ikea blew the fuck out of me. I ain't even gonna fucking lie to you. And I'm really, really, really getting colorist vibes from her. I'm getting that whole because I passed a brown paper bag test that I'm better than. You know, she wants to talk about, oh, going to a country club when she was growing up, which is all fine and dead. And it look, especially for those who ain't been in the South, even though I wasn't raised in the South, even though my roots are from the South, I have, you know, served in the military. So I spent a nice chunk of my military career in the South. I know that I know how that is. I know how country clubs were, especially for those who, you know, quote unquote, belong to certain um, affluent families and whatnot. But if you were going to country clubs, then you were either going in the late 70s, 80s, or the 90s. Which means that if you take those time frames and what was going on in the world, is that really something that you want to sit here and be bragging about, especially with these country clubs and what was going on in the world? That means many of these country clubs did not have African Americans there. And if they were, they were in very, very small numbers, which means that, okay, you know what? I'm going to let y'all feel in the blanks, but just her haughtiness. Just the snootiness and whatnot. And it's, and it, look, certain things I can understand. Like, she was complaining about glitter and plate smash and all the other stuff where it's just like, it don't matter. Oh, I thought it was going to be a big, big, big brunch. Okay, it was something that's intimate. And not just that, we're still in a pandemic. So, but you don't want to include that into your analysis, fine. Now, she said that her place was dirty. Okay, I can understand that. I'm one of those where, because of, again, me being a military and just understanding how things work, I would, her plate had specks of shit on it. I would just went to the bathroom, wiped the shit off myself, came back, if it was that big, or, because she did go to uh, Letitia, but it was how she came to her, because again, we all know it's not what you say. It's how, now, sometimes it is what you say, but it's mostly how you say it. And she could have been like, hey, Letitia, I, I just want to bring this to your attention. She's like, um, I was getting up to, you know, get the food and everything, and I looked at my plate, and, you know, there's specs on it. Um, I was wondering, like, is there a way that I can get, like, another uh, set of plates and whatnot? Real, it's just real simple, just, but, or just like, well, no, I can't do it because, like, it was just how all that went off, and you can tell that she had already rubbed Letitia the wrong way, so it's just like, ugh, what are we doing here? And, yeah, and I'm gonna just leave it there, because we... I think we're really going to go in on Ikea when we get to um, the panel. And I believe her name is Ikea, but I'm calling her Ikea. So what really got us going was there was a game being played. So they went and got the food, and you had Ikea complaining about the food and how the waffles was burnt and the bacon was burnt, all this other stuff. And look, I'm going to keep it all the way 1,000 with you. I, like, I don't care how elevated I get as a person. I was always raised, before you go to anybody's event, you eat before you get there. Because <laughs> you don't know what the food going to be like. Because they would have been one of those ways. She's like, okay, I'm going to put a little something, something on the plate. Just is what, like, it, it, it is what it is. Whatever. Anyway. So, Letitia wants to do a game where they pull, well, she's going to pull a name out of a bowl, hat, whatever. And everybody around the table has to say something positive about this person. Now, let me say this, <clears throat> Letitia, you full of shit. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm gonna just say what the fuck it is. You full of shit, <clears throat> and here's why. You know your best friend has an issue with one person in this group, and based off of the interactions, you never told your friend that you were going to play this damn game. So now you are literally putting your friend in a predicament to where either a she's going to suck it up and just say something nice about somebody that she don't fuck with, or she could potentially cause a scene and all this other stuff. And even though the emotions and everything in this scene that I'm going to get to were very raw, it all could have been avoided. Because if you know your friend and know that your friend ain't fucking with somebody, you could have easily just been like, um, you could have told her ahead of time, like, hey, we're going to play this game. Before I get to it, I'm going to give you a signal so you can get up and leave so then we can go ahead and play the game and then I'll signal for you to come back. Blah, blah, blah. But that's not what happened. So you want to hurt because what happened is the first name was Melanie. And I like Melanie. She actually follows me on Instagram. What's up, boo? And she says uh, she pleased the fifth. No comment. And Melanie was just kind of just like she was thrown because her whole thing is like, I ain't did shit to you. But that was a guilty by association. And then 
couple other names happen, then we get to Latrice. And what I also forgot to mention is when Latrice walked in, when I tell you that Marie was so bothered. And I know we can sit here and say you never let somebody see you sweat, but easy but you know, it's easier said than done. <clears throat> but also, Marie, you shooting the show, you knew whatever quote unquote happened last season happened. You knew that you were gonna have to run into her. So the fact that you haven't gotten yourself prepared for this is very telling. But I'm also going to say that I do understand the fact that not only are you trying to expand your businesses, not only is your mother who is, you know, a recovering addict living with you and possibly dipping out to go and do drugs and whatnot, not only has the mother of one of your son's uh, children has passed on, now you, you are having to take care of the grandchild. Amongst other things, yes, you are very going through it. And I know a lot of people could say she did not have to come if she was going through it. And I would agree. But again, if they are going by the whole thing, of if you're not in a scene slash episode, you don't get paid. She's there for a reason, right? But it's also as a friend. Letitia could have just been like, hey, da, 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 da. Because Letitia's whole thing is you're here to support me. Why couldn't you do it? But I understood what Marie was saying is, you know what I'm going through. Why are you, and she didn't say this, but why are you putting me in a situation to where things can go left? Now, Marie did say, because I got, because um, Marie did get up and um, exit the table before eventually leaving at one point. Because she was trying to cause a scene, but because you said I plead the fib, she actually did cause a scene. Because I felt that when the game started, Marie could have been like, oh, you know what? I need to go to the bathroom. And she could have got up right then before they even made it around to her. So it's ways to avoid this. But as a friend, if you know somebody ain't messing with somebody, you could warn them. But then why would you play a game that's going to cause some friction and whatnot? I do feel that, yes, Marie could have shown up a hell of a lot more for her friend. But I don't agree with what Letitia did. I don't. I, I really, really don't. And this is also one of those where it's just like, you know, you are expecting a lot from someone. Because here's the thing. There's a lot of mofos that I don't F with. Now, I will say I typically don't go to events where I know somebody that I don't fuck with is going to be there. Because I'm not trying to fuck up the event. Because I know how I get, right? But if I do decide that I'm going to show up for someone and that person knows that I am only here for you... Oh, they know good and goddamn well. I know y'all's here for me. I'm not going to put this nigga in a situation to where he going to sit here and cause a motherfucking seat. Because look, for those that know, I have no problem with shaking the motherfucking table. But with that being said, that's really all that I have. The only other thing that happened is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm cutting it short. Right quick. And then I'm going to leave y'all. Uh, Marie goes to the bathroom. Essie eventually follows her, talks it over with her, comes back, tells the teacher that, hey, she's going to leave. Letitia then wants to go and talk to Marie. Marie is trying to let her know. She's like, you know what I'm going through? This and third. Letitia's whole thing is you're here. You should be supporting me, which she is there to support you. But you're putting her in a situation that she shouldn't be in. Nevertheless, they're getting very, very loud. And because this is a small group and there's not a whole lot of people or there's not a whole lot of um, foaming or whatever in the walls or whatnot, they can hear the conversation going on from the men's room because that's where Marie um, accidentally walked into and Marie's friends from where she grew up came in knocking on the door because they heard that noise because when I tell you they was about ready to go up in there and sit here and be some head busters <laughs> but then they saw oh ain't nothing going on oh, okay we gonna go back and then eventually uh, Letitia goes to uh, Latrice and wants her to go in and talk to Marie to smooth things over but this is one of the instances where Letitia you're not reading the room because you clearly see your friend is upset. You clearly see that she is now in a headspace to where no rationale or reason is going to penetrate her brain. So to bring in her mortal enemy at this point, it's not going to be pretty. But we'll get to that in the next episode. So that's all that I got. I didn't try to I try to squeeze all this in less than 40 minutes, which is what I did. So thank you all so much for watching. Please be back here on Tuesday, 815 Central. For the whether you like it or not panel. And uh, yeah, I will see y'all later. So please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And y'all have a uh, fantastic weekend. All right. Peace out.